Hey everyone, this is Josh. It's been a while, but today in this video, we're going to talk about PDAs with Anchor and Solano. As always, my name is Josh, and this channel's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to blockchain technology. So quick question, what are PDAs? Uh, they are essentially program-derived accounts, and what they essentially are is they are accounts that are owned and modified by a smart contract um, and not any like any individual users. And as a quick reminder, accounts are custom data that is stored on the Solana network that's associated with your public key, or in this case, we're going to learn what PDAs are. So what are some of the benefits of PDAs? Well, the main one is that it's trustless. Essentially, it's a decentralized third party to hold data that is owned by a smart contract and no one else. So a great example is a third party escrow to hold funds between two users. I want to release some funds to uh, my friend Scott and Scott will have to complete some work for me. And once Scott has completed the work, I will release my fund and he'll get it. And we need a third party to hold the funds to ensure that Scott will complete the work for me and that I don't just give him the money and then he runs away. So that's what PDAs are for. And we're going to learn how to make them in this video. And as always, this video is sponsored by myself. Check out my previous salon videos and my playlist which will teach you everything you need to know to get started. And as always, disclaimer is not development advice, but then again, no one ever really pays attention to any of this. So moving on. So what exactly are PDAs? Let me move my head out of the way. So uh, normal accounts uh, that we have, that we've been working with in the past video, are usually associated with the public key of your wallet or a public key that you create. Um, and a wallet essentially is a public private key pair that only you know the private key which is what you use to sign your transactions uh, pdas are special in the sense that they actually don't have a private key and as a result they can really only be signed by the smart contract that created it so how are these uh, pair keys represented pair keys specifically being the actual wallet so what Solan does is they follow the ED25519 curve line uh, essentially what this is as you see on the picture there's a curve line and essentially what you do is you take the hash value of your public key essentially, and then anything, and if that hash value is on the line, then it is a guaranteed to be a wallet or you know an actual pairing. And anything that's outside of the line is a PDA. And so that's the basic, and so that's the basic idea. So continuing on, so how are the PDAs generated? So there are two concepts that are involved. One is the seed. Seed essentially are basically just random variables. We'll look more into that. That are used to generate the hash or you know a seed of the PDA on the curve. And so you might ask, well, how like what happens if our seed accidentally ends up on the curve line? Well, that's why we have the concept of a bump. A bump essentially is just a value that you add to the hash if it just happens to land on the curve. And because the variables are always constant, you are guaranteed to always have the same hash value every single time. And that's basically the highlights of what PDAs are, and we're going to start looking at how to use them. So as always, we have a sample app we're going to build. So in this example, we're going to look at an escrow example. Uh, no, not a full-fledged, and we don't actually send anything out. We just want to explore the concept of how do we actually get a, uh, how do we actually create a PDA. So. Uh, you know, we have we want to be able to create a third party to hold funds. We want to transfer to another person for a transaction. And so to do that, we're going to use a PDA to create a third party that will hold our funds, which once again, we're not going to implement. We're just going to uh, create the PDA and, you know, that PDA will hold some string. We're not going to do anything. And so what are the seeds we're going to use to generate this, you know, the hash, the, the PDA uh, hash on the curve line? And what I've seen other people use is usually you have a couple of things. So first you just have a fixed string. Um, so in this case, we're going to have a string escrow, which will be, you know, always translated to a certain hash value. And then we'll include two other things, the sender's public key and the receiver's public key. And so by doing a combination of this, we are guaranteed that um, we will always create a PDA that is associated with me and the person that I'm trying to send. Uh, there is one caveat to this and that is if i'm trying to make multiple transaction between me and another receiver then that won't work because we're, we're already using this seed so we have to finish the transaction the 
first transaction before we can use it for anything else. So it's very similar to like a hash map, for example, you give it your key and then you're always guaranteed to get the value. And it's a quick, you know, O of one lookup. So before we actually go and make our demo app, let's actually take a quick look at how do we define a PDA in Anchor. So we want to create a PDA. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a context. So in this example, we have this create escrow context that we're going to use to initialize our PDA. And the great thing about Anchor is that you don't actually need to initialize anything or create it. If you just include the correct attribute, Anchor will take care of all of it for you in the background. Here's our PDA, as you see with the arrows. Uh, we create it, we use the account attribute, we use init to initialize the PDA. And we need to include our seeds. And so uh, this is our string. We use escrow, the string escrow as one of the variables. Uh, we have from, which is, if you look down here, is it is the account associated with our public wallet. To, which is the key to the person we're trying to send the funds over to the other person. And so essentially we are just creating a seed based off of the string escrow, the key from myself and the key from another person. And all of this is saved inside the variable escrow, which is essentially just the escrow account type that we will define. But we'll look in the code and see what it does later. And so we look at, probably should have this went through, but yeah, this is an example of what I was talking about. The from variable that we're using as a seed right here is directly referenced by the from that we are setting in the context when we're sending our transaction from the front end to our smart contract. And of course, same thing with the two. And then I didn't include a slide, but we need to include the system program right here just for our Solana, just, just for our program to actually work. So, all right, moving on, we need to actually start set up. All right, so now that we know roughly what we want to implement, let's actually set up our, our code base. So a quick, a quick reminder of what we have to do. Since we're using Anchor, we're going to call Anchor init demo PDA, and we just create the project. And then you know we implement our code. Once we're happy with that, we do Anchor build to see if everything compiles correctly. Anchor deploy to move it onto the network, or Anchor test to run our unit tests. So as always, we're going to go to our WSO instance because you can run a smart contract on a Windows. We need to run it on a Linux environment. I'm going back to my root, going to my video folder where I've always included all my video projects. And I'm going to do anchor init and I'll just call it demo PDA. And this will create our demo project. All right, actually, I'm not going to init anything. I actually recently moved and I don't have internet while I'm recording. So instead, we're just going to look at the demo project that I've been working on for this video instead. All right, so I'm gonna pull this up. Uh, so this is the demo project I've been working on. So for all you long-term viewers, I'm pretty sure you know the drill. Uh, you go to, you go, click on the bottom left corner when you open Visual Studio Code, you open a new WSO instance, and then just click open folder and then go to the repository of wherever you create your project on. All right, so let's make the screen bigger before we actually dive into the code. So as always in all Anchor projects, we have our public module and we you know, call it our demo PDA. Uh, inside each of our module, we define the instructions that we wanna process. And instructions essentially are the ways we actually interact with the data on our smart contract. And so we only have one instruction and that is, you know, the create our PDA, uh, create escrow. And as always, we need, we always need to include the context, the create escrow context, which we defined down here. We all have seen this. Um, we'll talk a bit more about the implementation later, but we only have one instruction that we can create a transaction to from our front end. So if we go to our context, nothing new. We all know what this is. I will talk a bit more about some of the fields that I kind of skipped over and from the slide. We all know what the seeds are. Um, we have bump and bump is only used if our, the generated hash value of our seed is on that curved line. Otherwise we don't do anything. You just normally just include the bump and it'll take care of itself. And because we're initializing a new 
account, we have the payer field for our attribute. And that, that just means who is paying for the creation of this PDA. Usually it's just the receipt, uh, sender. Well, so we'll just put the account for our from, which we have, we pass in right here. So space, as you might guess, is how much bytes we're going to take up on the slot network and we have to pay for it. And so a quick way to do that is instead of you know counting the bytes ourselves, we can use this helper function called size of, which we import up here. It's just from the standard library. And essentially what it does is that it takes in some struct that we pass it and it just returns the byte size of that struct. So if we look at that, we have this escrow account, which is the actual data we're storing on the Solana network. And this function, the size of function, will just calculate the size of all of this. Uh, one tip that I will mention is that if we have variables that are of dynamic range, for example, you know, a string, then we actually have to include the size. So maybe if I want to include, you know, a string that's 20 size or, you know, 20, 20 letters long, we need to add 20, I believe. One byte would represent one letter. But in this case, all of our values are defined, so we don't need to worry about that. And of course, so all of this so will create our PDA, which is referenced in the field called escrow. And that about wraps up everything that we're passing in. If we quickly look at our escrow account, we'll see that it's not anything too surprising. You know, we have our from the person that's sending the transaction to the escrow to be held to the person who will be receiving the amount that's being held by our escrow account or smart contract really. And then finally, the amount. Uh, normally this would just be like a, a, a SPL token of maybe representing Solana. But in our case, since we're not doing a full application, we're just going to set a arbitrary amount. So that's a, you know, a unsigned integer. So that's an escrow account. And so I think that roughly uh, defines our, our context. So let's actually look at the implementation. It's nothing too fancy. So we have our create escrow. And this function takes in two parameters, the context, which is always included, and a amount variable. And uh, we'll see later, or probably in a different video, uh, the how we would actually set the variable, but uh, we will be passing that in from the front end, and we'll just be using it. So inside our context, uh, we will be getting the escrow from our, the escrow account from our accounts. And so that actually, this escrow, just a quick reference, directly references this variable field in our uh, struct. And so we're saying that to a, a variable. And then from the variable, we just need to set the field. Uh, we set our from to be the you know public key from our from that we passed in, same thing with the to. And then the amount that we are uh, sending over is stored is the amount that we passed in from our uh, variable when we send our transaction in the front end. And that's about it. Uh, Anchor does handle a lot of the security checks for us. That being said, we can probably do more checks ourselves, but you know, this is just a demo about PDA. So we're not going to go dive into security for that. And that's what I want to do for this demo app. I already built this and deployed, so I know that this works. So I won't go through that tedious stuff. So we'll just kind of move on to the last part. And I'm sure if you're looking at the timeline of this video, you see that we're pretty much near the end. So writing tests. So maybe it's me, maybe it's the testing framework, but I just could not get the PDA to actually work for me. So uh, in the next video, we're going to actually create a front end that would um, send the transaction that uses the PDA. And of course, don't worry, I'll also include a GitHub repo that we can all uh, review and understand what's happening. So hopefully this has been a relatively small bite-sized understanding of what PDAs are and how to use them. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll actually go through testing our code on a front end application. After that, we're going to find start a long multi-part series about creating our own front end applications. So stay tuned for that. I promise I'm trying. I really am trying to make videos faster. To wrap things up, appreciate a like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and maybe hit that bell notification. Outside of that, I'll see you on the next video. Bye.